All right, so I've got two of them then, right? The real simple one here is, you ready? We're ready for you. <laughs> Good. Dollar cost average on the way down. Don't time the market, time your deposits. That's like the most awesome thing you could do. Makes you feel good. And when the market's going lower, all I'm saying is just increase your deposit. When the market goes up, maybe back it down to normal, right? Just those little bits, increase your, or I should say lower your average cost, then actually raise it along the way. Number two, I'm just going. All right, just going. You're going. All right, Be go. a rebel, right. man, spend backwards. There's a car that I really, really want. And unfortunately, it has six digits in its price tag because everybody wants a stinking car. But when there comes a time where the economy's weak and, oh, my God, we're worried about this or that or whatever, everything starts to fall and there's more available. I'm not saying it still won't have six digits in it, but I'll spend the money then. I'll expand my life when everybody else is contracting. Be that rebel and do it backwards. A fun little story I'll never forget. It was Valentine's Day. Went to Universal Studios, stayed at the Hard Rock Hotel, and for 99 bucks, we stayed the night. We got fast passes and two free ice cream uh, cup looking things. I thought that was awesome because nobody wanted to go. It was right after the financial crisis there. I love it because I just, you went so fast on all this with your energy. I had to chug that. Yes. <laughs> so, so like, this is awful, but I was going to run out of time because I got to talk now. And so emergency fund. So with the emergency fund, it's three to six months is this rule of thumb, but it's like a withdrawal rate. When you're starting to retire, you're like, okay, well, my withdrawal rate is this amount. It's different for every single person. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's sitting there and they're like, hey, look here, here's how much you should do every single time. Look at the text, this is what you're gonna do. <clears throat> Dave Ramsey, that's not the case. Instead, you really wanna figure out what's going to work for you. If you have a solid job with the government, your spouse is the high income earner and you have a combined amount that's coming in. And let's just say that your expenses are 5,000 a month and you have $10,000 a month coming in. Do you need 10,000 times three or 10,000 times six? That's just wasting money. Instead, yeah. let's look and say, hey, let's bring it down to our baseline expenses of what we need and let's cover that, not actually our income. So it's really start to think through the emergency fund, making sure the dollars are working for you as well. Money markets right this second, things like that, that you could be parking the money in, getting a high yield savings account for that money. And if you don't need all six months, maybe get a little crazy and eventually invest a little bit of it. Yeah. So that's one thing. Uh, another is just thinking outside the box. What are you doing with your money? And you really no, I didn't drink it all, didn't you? I had to. <laughs> I had drink to. It all. Not thinking through the yeah. idea of you know some ridiculousness like a universal life insurance policy that's going to scam you. Don't think like that. That's not thinking outside the box. Instead, donor advised funds. If you're giving to a charity this year, and maybe you're right on the threshold of being able to itemize your taxes, potentially you say, hey, you know what? I could give a little bit more, but I don't want it to go to the charity yet. I want it to be for the next year. Yep. We'll give that into a donor advised fund, and then you can actually make sure that you're getting the tax deduction this year, but then you can earmark what you want to give and when throughout the rest you of actually, the, the next few years. You, you got me there because I just the other day on Jazz After Dark, I did an exact example of that. Someone who's giving this year and next year, someone who's taking a standard deduction to show how you can actually, so this person had 5,300 extra dollars in uh, deductions there because they just front loaded their donations. So yep. think outside the box a little bit. Let's get creative in 2024, uh, whether it's, you know, charitable remainder trust, HSAs, backdoor Roths, all the fancy things that you can do. Let's just ask the question. Can you, can, is that for me? Is that something that I can do? If not, what can I do? HSAs, it's, it's one I just had the conversation with a client yesterday on and just really being able to utilize that but for the gain of everything, people are looking at an HSA and they're saying, well, should I do that or should I not? Yep. It does depend. Again, HSAs aren't for everybody. But the idea here is that if you can say, okay, my PPO plan is going to cost me this much in premium. My HSA is going to be cheaper oftentimes with my premium or the high deductible plan. So you go with that plan. You're going to save on your premium. So then you can actually invest that money and save it for future costs. Also, oftentimes an employer is going to give you money to go with the HSA plan because it's going to be saving them money on the backside as well. So it's some things you want to look at. Again, not for everybody thinking outside the box with this. Yeah. And I'm in therapy to conquer my fears of using staircases, taking one step at a time. It's not a green screen. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's good there. What did the, uh, what, what a Spanish clock sound like? Tick tackle. <laughs> Big taco. Oh gosh. What do bad breaths? What do bad breath clocks sound like? Tic tac. <laughs>